short video about kind of the rock cycle to just really help explain the process that's going on. Let me make sure our sound is going to work. Mm -hmm. I bet you thought rocks are just rocks, right? Nope. There are three major types of rocks. Sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic. But the coolest thing about rocks is that each one has the ability to change into the other kind. Huh? How a little boring. Sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous rocks change into each other in a process we call the rock cycle. No, not that kind of rock. This kind of rock. Yeah, that's more like it. The first type of rock we'll talk about is sedimentary. On the surface of the earth, wind and water break down rock into tiny pieces. Those pieces might collect in a riverbed, on a floodplain, be swept into sand dunes, or collect on the ground. Over time, layers of these rock fragments build up and start to weigh down on one another. Eventually, they get fused together to form sedimentary rocks. The cool thing is that if you look closely, you can still see pieces of the original rocks or sediment that were bound together. Let's do a demo. For our rocks, we're going to use jelly beans. Each flavor of jelly bean represents a rock or mineral that has been broken down by wind and water through a process called erosion. We put our jelly beans in this bowl and add some honey and cornstarch. They're the bonding agents to hold our pieces together, kind of like glue for rocks. A little time and pressure has turned our jelly bean pieces of sediment into a brand new rock. So what happens if you apply both heat and pressure? It becomes a metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rock may form by friction of the Earth's shifting crust, pressure deep within the Earth, or even radioactive decay. The heat and pressure cause the rock structure to change, so it takes on a new form. Even though it's changed, you can often still see structures of its original components. Let's take our sedimentary jelly bean rock and turn it into a metamorphic one with heat and pressure. To add pressure, we'll put this heavy pot on top. For heat, we'll stick it in the oven for about 30 minutes. After it's cooled, you can see how our jelly bean rock has formed a more solid unit. However, you can still see the individual pieces of candy, but the structure has fundamentally changed. The third type of rock in the rock cycle is igneous. When rocks get superheated deep within the earth, they melt and form a liquid called magma. If magma rises to the surface or moves up in the earth's crust, it begins to cool. Igneous rocks have a uniform structure throughout, but will have different properties depending on whether they cooled on the Earth's surface or within the crust. To turn our jelly bean metamorphic rock into an igneous rock, we're going to melt it in this pot of boiling water. When our rock is cooled, you can see how all the different pieces combine to make an igneous rock with uniform structure throughout. Pretty cool, huh? But this is only part of the story. We showed you one path through the rock cycle, but really any rock can go from one type to another. For example, igneous rocks can turn into either metamorphic or sedimentary. And metamorphic rocks don't have to become igneous rocks. They can be broken down again and become sedimentary. Or the sedimentary rocks can get pushed deep within the earth to form igneous. See, all of the rock types are connected, making a cycle that never ends. The end. But you get the idea that um, the rocks can change from one type to another, which is something that you probably don't realize because it's a rock. You don't think it changes that much. But this picture is also in Google Classroom, and it, can sh it shows basically how the igneous, metamorphic, and sediment sedimentary rocks are related and how they can change from one to another. All right, so the rock cycles, the interaction amongst Earth's water, air, and land can cause rocks to change from one type to another. The continuous process that cause rocks to change make up the rock cycle. And most of this is going to take place over a long period of time. Again, we're talking thousands of years 
for these rocks. Now sometimes it happens quicker. You can see erosion happening. You can see a rock that was big that has been in a stream get worn away over time by the water and the sand in a stream. So sometimes it can happen a little quicker. It really depends on the rock and the area that that rock is found. Okay, so how sedimentary rock is formed? Um, it's a weathering process in which the rocks are physically and chemically broken down by water, air, and living things to produce sediment. Um, sediment is basically made up of weathered pieces of earth material. So eventually, the sediment is going to get compacted and kind of pushed together like they push those jelly beans together, and that is going to form the sedimentary rock. So sometimes, like in these up here, you can still see the individual pieces. Sometimes it gets compacted enough that you're not seeing the individual pieces as much. These are the kind of rocks that are most often going to have fossils in them because 
think of a dead organism that's being pressed between layers of rock and it leaves an impression behind. rock, the pressure and or temperature is what's going to help that. So when sedimentary rock becomes buried, pressure or temperature pushes it all together and makes it into this molten kind of um, really hot material and then it's going to change it into metamorphic. So if you think of metamorphosis, metamorphosis means to change. That's basically what's happening here. Metamorphic rock is changed from the other two. So it can remain as magma and then eventually be pushed to the surface as lava or it can stay underground and kind of cool underground and that makes a different shape of rock and a different kind of texture of rock if it cools above or below ground. and the rain and the, the wind is going to have an impact on the sedimentary rock and igneous and metamorphic are more affected by the internal environment of the earth.
short video about the three specific kinds of rocks and how they interact with each other in the rock cycle. Rocks are everywhere. They are large and small, heavy or light, porous or dense. But rocks in some shape or form can be found all over the planet. Different types of rocks are formed in different ways. There are three main types of rock, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Igneous is a word that means fiery. Igneous rock is formed when magma or lava cools. Sometimes magma cools slowly underneath the Earth's surface. This forms intrusive igneous rock, like granite. Other times, lava cools when it comes to the surface in a volcanic eruption. This forms extrusive igneous rock. Some examples of extrusive igneous rock are tuff, obsidian, and pumice. Igneous rocks make up about 95% of the Earth's crust. The next type of rock is sedimentary rock. Sediment is small particles of sand, mud, and organic material that settle to the bottom of water or land areas, often lakes or oceans. Sedimentary rocks are formed when sediment accumulates over time in deposits that form layers. These layers become squeezed and compressed over time until they consolidate into a rock. Sedimentary rocks are the types of rocks in which fossils may be found, since the process of forming sedimentary rocks can preserve plant and animal remains that are deposited into the sediment layers. Some examples of sedimentary rock are limestone, shale, and sandstone. The third type of rock is metamorphic rock. The word metamorph means to change form, and metamorphic rock is rock that has been changed by extreme heat and pressure. Sedimentary rock, igneous rock, or even other metamorphic rocks can be changed by heat and pressure into new kinds of rock. Metamorphic rocks can be formed by being deep under the earth where pressure and temperatures are high, or when rock near the surface is heated up by the movement of tectonic plates or magma. Different types of rocks become different types of metamorphic rock when exposed to heat and pressure. For example, shale becomes slate. Sandstone becomes quartzite. And limestone becomes marble. Rocks are slowly but constantly changing in something known as the rock cycle. The rock cycle begins with magma, or hot melted rock, deep beneath the Earth's surface. This magma becomes crystallized becoming igneous rock. These rocks begin to erode or break down into small pieces because of wind, water, or other forces. The small fragments of rock are carried away as sediment when water passes over them and are deposited in layers, which eventually become sedimentary rocks. Then, some sedimentary rocks are pushed below the surface due to tectonic activity where they are exposed to heat and pressure, transforming them into metamorphic rocks. If the rocks are buried even deeper, they may melt and form magma, starting the cycle all over again. Of course, sedimentary and metamorphic rocks can be eroded into sediment, and igneous rock can become metamorphic rock or lava. But one way or another, rocks all over the world keep changing from one form to the next. And that's what I think is interesting, is that we think of like the water cycle and how materials move through Earth and how energy gets transferred, but we don't really think of, I mean, it's a rock. We don't really think of where that rock has been or where that rock could potentially be. 
Um, so it is kind of interesting to think of how it has changed and it's not always going to be the same. If you look at like stone benches or cemetery headstones, you think of those being there for a long time. But some of the, there's a really cool cemetery um, over by David Barton kind of. Really, got some really old things. I, they don't let you go in it though. I've noticed it's blocked off. But you can see some of the tombstones in there have already started to like erode and decay and fall apart. And it's just because, like this is showing, um, the rocks are changing over time, which is something we don't really think of too much. So anyways, um, that's all the notes we're taking for today. Introduction to rocks, learning the different kinds of rocks. Um, we are going to start a new assignment today. Remember the things that are due today is the latitude and the longitude assignment, the topography assignment, and the bell work. Then we have that topography gizmo that was a little longer, and that's not due till next week. So I do want you to focus on that first if you haven't got it finished already, okay? Um, the next one we're going to start on is something called a rock one-pager. We will do these one-pagers frequently, um, not like all the time, but I think they're a nice way for us to kind of organize our thoughts and to do something other than on the Chromebooks um, and other than just, you know, fill out a worksheet or whatever. So these one-pagers, I'm going to give you some examples that, um, oh, do I have examples on there? If you go to Google Classroom, you can see the examples better. So I will put Google Classroom up here and find it for you. Okay. So we are looking at the Rock Cycle One Pager, which is here. And then there are instructions for it. And then there's also some examples. So we'll look at the examples first. So it's kind of like a mini poster but it's got a purpose behind it. Um, you're gonna, there's paper up here, or if you wanted, you could do this on your Chromebooks, but what I've learned is that Chromebooks you can't really draw really well on. You are more than welcome to. If you would like to do this on your Chromebook, you can, but um, it seems like a lot of times paper will work better. But this, is, this one was obviously done on mitosis. It was one of my anatomy students, but they did a really good job. It needs to have a border something that has to do in our case with the rock cycle, then it's got to have a title and it has to have colorful pictures to it. Um, here's another one that was really good. You can see a border and a title and then lots of colorful pictures. This time they were doing like the different steps of the um, of mitosis. So my anatomy students are also going to be doing a one pager very soon too. Um, here's another one. Again, see this one's not as fancy as the others, and that's okay. I don't care if you're not an excellent artist. That's not what this is about. The idea is to think through the process and put that process into paper in an organized way. And here's another one. This one was really good, I thought. Very colorful, but they've got their border, they've got their title, they've got their descriptions. And let's go over the instructions really quick together as well. So here are the instructions for the one pager. Um, unlined white paper, or you could draw it on your Chromebook. The title, and then color pencils, whatever it needs to be colored. And you do need to fill the entire page. You wanna think about it. It's not just something you throw together randomly. You want it to kind of have a purpose and be well organized. Um, two quotations from reading or activity. So what I mean with that is, like you can look up a quote about rocks or um, you can look at the notes we went over today and said, you know, something about the rock cycle. So two kind of quotes about it. At least three images. It says you can cut them out of magazines. That's okay. We don't really have any magazines, but if it's something you want to do at home, you're welcome to. Um, and then place five vocabulary words around the page somewhere. And then write the main idea of the rock cycle. So just kind of describe the rock cycle, what it is, okay? So the rock cycle is moving between igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. Um, this one we can skip. This one's kind of confusing. It says write to cost level two or three questions and answer them. 
So this one we can skip because this one's a little bit confusing. But I do want you to have five vocabulary words, at least three images. You can find two quotes about rocks or the rock cycle. And also, of course, make sure your name is on the back of it so that you can get credit for it. And it has some kind of order. Are there any questions about it? Like I said, I put some examples in there. And even though the examples are not about rocks, kind of gives you an idea of what it looks like. This will be due next Friday as well. So I know it'll take a while with the drawing and the coloring and the planning it out. So it will be due next Friday, so we have plenty of time. So what I would like you to do is again to finish up the assignments that are due today, the latitude and longitude and the topography one, and of course the bell work. And then, that was, I think he did that when we printed it out. It was the, the map with like the different layers on it. Yeah, it's up here still.